G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So last week I posted the fourth video in the series of my full fish room tour for the year 2020. If you haven't seen those videos yet, watch the entire playlist from one to four right here. Um, and that completely wrapped up what is on this side of my fish room. However, today we're going to be doing part five of my full fish room tour where I discuss what's on these stands on this side of the room. These are new stands with new aquariums. Um, I acquired the aquariums for free. If you haven't seen how I acquired those for tanks for free, you can watch that video right here. Um, also, if you want to see how we built these stands, you can watch that video right here. But um, before I start part five of this full fish room tour, I might just give you a quick update on what happened in the fish room in the past week. So it's Sunday morning and I've just finished breakfast, walk into the fish room and I notice this trickle of water on the ground and I notice it wasn't coming from any tanks. Within an hour or so of taking this first photo, this is what my fish room looked like. It's insane. It was well past my ankles deep. Thankfully, the water didn't make it into my home. The fish room actually sits lower than the rest of my house. So for that reason and tanks flooding that could happen at any point that's why i chose this particular room in my house as my fish room so we had about 600 mil of rain in three days and sydney was flooded so it's all good now the drainage issue is fixed and my fish room is now drying clean but anyway let's get on with part five of my fish room tour so guys the first tank on the rack big surprise here has lamprologus oscillatus fry so these guys are pushing two centimeters, almost some of them are two and a half, maybe almost three centimeters, the largest one in here. Uh, so these guys are finally at the size where I can start to sell off some fry and I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, these guys went in here about, I think they've been in this tank for almost four weeks now. So they're right at home. You can see I've got the PVC pipe cut up into section for them. Um, it's just 10 mil PVC pipe. Uh, there is some 20 mil, P, uh, 20 mil PVC pipe in there as well, as well as some elbows just to give them shelter. But yeah, these guys are doing really well. Um, you could see some of the food, um, uneaten food on the ground there. Uh, that's on my t uh, Tanganyika and pellet uh, that I'll just vacuum up after this so it doesn't pollute the water. But yeah, these guys aren't plumbed into any system. I'm just using those sponge filters for the time being. Um, two double-headed XY2822 sponge filters. They're the large type. Um, if you look around on eBay, you can buy them in bulk for about $5 a sponge filter. Very, very cheap. Good quality filter. Um, and yeah, it's been doing the job, like I said, for about a month. Uh, the, the sponges were cycled media from the big rack behind me, so I didn't have to wait for this tank to cycle. I could just use, uh, I just transferred the sponges over to these new uh, sponge filters and put them in the tank. But yeah, there you go guys, that's my Lamprologus Oscillatus Gold Fry Tank. So here they are guys. Fish that I've been holding out from showing you. My Electric Blue German Rams. These guys are stunning. When the light hits them, you can see they've got that iridescent blue shimmer on them. Almost metallic white color on some of, oh, on all of them. I've got four in this tank. And you can see the floor of this tank is littered with Indian almond leaves. That, uh, these leaves give, they're meant to soften the water, lower the pH and they also supply the fish with a film of biological media on the leaves as they decay, as well as trace elements in the water as the leaves decay. So they supply a lot of benefits to uh, South American cichlids, the plecos, um, soft water loving fish, love these guys. Um, so I've got a couple of them in this tank, I've only got three, um, but you can see they haven't really well, they did uh, tan the water, you know, they, they, they released some tannins in the water. Some people like that, some people don't. Um, I don't mind the look, I, I think it gives a more natural feeling to the tank. And, um, like, you know, having that, that tannin look with South American cichlids. But, yeah, it, after a couple of water changes, the tannins go away. Um, but, yeah, you can see a nice driftwood that I've got in this tank. 
as well as the two flat saucers uh, in the hope I can spawn these guys and breed these guys because I'd absolutely love to. Um, I purchased them about two weeks ago now and they're doing quite well. You can see that guy there, it's pretty, pretty big fins. Um, beautiful male, it's got to be a male that one. And that guy there is a male as well. Oops, just tapped the lens against the glass by mistake. So that guy there, he's a male as well, I believe. And that fish there is a female. And I think this fish here is a female. So they're, apparently they're a pretty hard fish to sex. Uh, that's what the store told me when I tried to sex them in the shop. But we agreed that the females might have the kind of whitish blue uh, look. Um, I'll try and get some nice shots for you guys. So that's the female in the back there. You can see it's not as blue, it's more of a white. Whereas the males have more of a electric blue color. Um, and obviously the longer fins. This guy is just a beautiful fish. You can see he's displaying uh, his big dorsal fin, his massive tail. Um, beautiful, beautiful fish. And you can see on this, this guy here, I believe that's a female, um, how they're more like a metallic white. Um, and that's a female at the top, and the two males have just swam into view at the front there with the longer fins and more of a blue tinge. So yeah, this is my electric blue German Ram tank. I really hope to breed these guys. Uh, yeah, they're just stunning little fish. And guys, the last tank on this rack that has fish in it at the moment is this tank. And these guys are quite shy. And that's because they are albino bristlenose. You can see the male there in his little terracotta cave. Um, he's fanning his fins, circulating water throughout the cave. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have eggs in there yet. Um, but yeah, he's quite a large mate, you see he's getting scared and going deeper into the cave. There is a female in this tank and she's hiding because basically this tank doesn't have a light on it and I purely have put the light on this tank for uh, filming this little video. But the female is quite large, she's hiding in underneath the driftwood but it's quite a messy tank as some of you guys will be aware. Bristlenose are quite messy eaters and they poop a lot. And yeah, this tank needs frequent water changes um, because of the amount of poop that they do. And um, even with the water changes I've been doing, you can still see that there are tannins in this water. Um, there's a you know, pretty large amount of driftwood that I've got on the side there and the Indian almond leaves. Um, but also the light that I'm using to light this tank up at the moment is creating a little bit more of a yellow hue than the normal aquarium LEDs that I use. So uh, this is just my LED torch that I'm using. I'm not expecting them to spawn for another few weeks at least. And would you believe, I think, there is a bristlenose egg on this Indian almond leaf. Um, I can't believe it. Just filming some basic B-roll for the video. And I've noticed that there's what appears to be an egg out there. So I'm not sure if the male is sitting on eggs um, in his little cave there, but I believe that's an egg. Can't believe it. I only had these guys for not even a month. That's really good. They are an adult pair, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but yeah, hopefully they've spawned. I'll try and get some footage of uh, the male in his cave with hopefully some eggs, but I doubt I'm going to be able to do that. I don't want to disturb him too much either. Uh, but they are a large adult pair, and yeah, hopefully I'll have plenty of babies with these guys. And we'll see how they go. Beautiful male there. See how large he is. He's pushing probably about oh, 12, 13 centimeters, I'd say. There you go, guys. That's my uh, albino bristlenose tank.
So there you have it guys, part five of my full fishing tour. Now next week, there's gonna be a video coming to you from a surprising location. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video. Also, I noticed in the stats that only about 20% of my subscribers are seeing my videos. So please hit that notification bell so you get notified when I release a new video. But that generally is Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Sydney time. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up now, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.